Oh yeah, I feel like once we start to get on the podcast, Dave, you need to tell some story I was hearing last night about uh, the Gwent Trophy. I understand there's been some some mild drama with the Gwent Trophy, it sounded like, last night. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. Let's start, let's start the podcast. Let's start it. Okay. Let's just start it. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm going to say is that... I've had a good year for both like our our physical Gwent game and also the standalone like playing against Joel. Like I I've had a good year, but I'm remembering back to that one like win streak Joel had. Like it was like last fall or something where he won like 80 percent of the games for about a month and a half, and he never let me forget it. Like multiple times a day. Like hey Dave, remember how far ahead I am? So now that I've had multiple win streaks this year, and now we have a trophy to fight over. I'm refusing to let it drop. Like I'm bringing it up as often as possible. We were we were playing today. I I won one game and Joel won one game, but I, I'm still ahead like five to one for December, right? So I'm I'm just giving Joel a hard time. And each time Joel makes that face, that like that like mm, like I'm laughing, but inside I I'm getting kind of stabby. <laughs> he made that face a few times, and finally I just lost it. I'm like, oh gosh, I am going to ruin this after like a year and a half. I'm gonna go too far. Joel's just gonna stand up, not say a word, and just never play again. So we were talking about flipping the table over with Dave over this Elijah where we're like eat usually. And I was like, Dave, what are you gonna say as you fly over? And Dave's like, I went too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like cars flying everywhere. No, I won one too many times. Uh, Dave, I, Dave is Dave is now. He's just ripping me <laughs> wide open with his comments while we play the game. What was it? I played really hard the first round. <laughs> and Dave, Dave, what did you say? I was okay, just so like, just, you bastard. <laughs> just so like you know how the game of Gwent works. There's three rounds, so you kind of have to like strategize. Do you um, go all in first round and try to like make them think you have good cards for the last two rounds because you have to win two out of the three we played a game where joel went like all in for the first round and then i had just the perfect cards to still um pull a win out of that first round then i let him have the second and then third round i had like a three card advantage and just he had no chance in the third round <laughs> <laughs> i just don't know where it came from joel was just looking so crestfallen at the end of the third round i was like Oh, Joel, but your armies were so big and strong that first round. <laughs> it's like, shut up, you bastard. Shut up. <laughs> it's like, but you did so well the first round. What happened? <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm going to ruin this. <laughs> it's all going to fall apart. What's uh, amazing, you guys, like, to you guys, this is like Thunderdome. And you're in your own little world when you're talking about it, like... I'm just getting torn <laughs> apart on the Gwent field. Oh, mighty! My cards are mighty! <laughs> this is what happens, like, though, oh. when you're number one and number two in the world. That's true. Mm. That, uh, and everyone else is like, oh, those two nerds are going David to play and I, we, again. we do know, though, when the Gwent game goes live with leaderboards and stuff. Oh, crap. We're so screwed. Oh, crap. We're, like, so screwed. I'm getting sweaty just thinking about it. <laughs> You guys are going to have some vicious competition against each other then. It's, it's actually quite scary to think about. <laughs> it's going to be as bad as like trials times. <laughs> I'm scared for Joel actually. Controllers will be wrecked. <laughs> on the subject of standalone uh. Gwent, over like things being break, I just played a dumb amount of hours in between working on other projects. So I'm like level 45 in Gwent. Joel was like out of town, but was like wanting to play more standalone Gwent to try to catch up with me. So instead of playing all those hours that he couldn't, because he was away from vacation, <laughs> he bought like seventy dollars of Gwent card packs. <laughs> I was like, and of course I can't let him live live that down either. I'm like, I'm sorry, Joel, you can't buy your way to where I am. I'm sorry, that takes skill. <laughs> Yet yeah, he still tried. <laughs> I was like, when leaderboards come out, Joel literally might like pay to win, as in like hundreds of dollars. <laughs> like, It'll be I really bad. Like the leader, it goes live, and then Joel gets that first big Norman check, and he's just sweating, staring at his student loans, sweating, Gwen, sweating. He's like, you only live once. One million dollars. <laughs> One last ride. <laughs> One last keg. You're sitting out on the curb with all of your stuff as Joey throws your suitcase out of the house. You're like, I'm the champion. <laughs> I was number one. <laughs> Have you seen my Northern Realms deck, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, Other gosh. internet virgins cry when they see my name. <laughs> they cry. <laughs> Well, anyway, guys, welcome to the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, a podcast all about the irreverent love of gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Jeremiah. Tonight, I'm joined by Joel. Hey. Dave. 
Hey, guys. And James. Welcome back, James. What's up? Well, thank you. Thank you. I see you're the only one of us with a visible Christmas tree. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Probably on. the only one sitting in the living room, too. <laughs> 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 That's true. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to fit a Christmas tree in my office. Everything's full of junk. Well, if you got rid of that giant fax machine, you probably could have some room there. <laughs> my printer. Giant. Printer no, it's my fax, fax machine. machine, Joel. That's how I do my business. <laughs> yeah. Laser copier. <laughs> no, I was at the doctor's office like two weeks ago. They're like, uh, I, I we something for our health insurance where if we go and get physicals, they fill out the paperwork, they send it in, we get like a discount on their health insurance, and uh, and they're like, all right, here you go. Uh, can you can you fax this in? And I just stared at them like, no. And she's like, <laughs> and it, she just stared back for a second. She's like, would you like us to fax this in? I said, yes, please. That would be fantastic. She's like, yeah. Nobody ever is able to fax it in themselves anymore. I'm like, I wonder why. We're talking to someone else today. We're building them a website, and one of their vendors requires you to use faxes, and you can't digitally sign <laughs> anything. You have to actually sign with a pen and then fax it. And I was telling them like. For anyone who knows what they're doing, that is the easiest thing in the world to fake. A fax <laughs> is a photocopy that comes out the other end. Like, you know how easy that is to fake? The only people <laughs> oh, that inconveniences man. are the people who don't know how to do it. Anyway, so this is a podcast all about the reverent love of gaming. We have an awesome <laughs> topic tonight. But before we hop into that, Dave, you have a short little story for us. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, niece and nephew came over five and six last week to visit for a few minutes and for you guys that follow the podcast on my channel, you know I've been remodeling the office for like two months now. I'm just getting it all set up, so they were checking out like, you know, all the Witcher figurines and all the stuff on the bookshelves and everything and checking it out. <laughs> my, I, I always joke with Joel and Jeremiah that like, I make YouTube videos for people my age and for the kind of stuff I like, you know, lore and Witcher and Fallout, all the nerdy like, <laughs> people our age stuff. But I don't understand how young the YouTube audience actually is, but I, it kind of clicked when niece and nephew were visiting, my nephew was looking around the room, looked over here and saw my microphone and uh, the boom, immediately just pointed to it and just shouted in the most accusing tone, you're a YouTuber. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? Well, kind of, what does that mean? And he kind of looked at it for a minute. <laughs> and he just, like, it, it's so funny with the kids, like, I can answer their questions, but like, they weren't waiting for an answer, like, they're already ready with the next question, like, <laughs> answering it does not matter whatsoever. It's like, yeah, I, I kind of make some videos, and he kind of looks at the mic a bit more, and he kind of puts his hands on his hips, and he goes, aunt says that your videos are not for children. <laughs> Just the way he said it, so accusing. I was like, also true, but <laughs> why do I feel bad? <laughs> I was just, it What's amazed me think that... about you growing up? Like, my <laughs> uncle made videos not for children. <laughs> So Dave, now that you know the uh, the YouTube audience skews that young, are you uh, got a new gambling site you're setting up for us? Oh, <laughs> Jeremiah, I make Fallout videos. I already knew how le young the audience was on YouTube. <laughs> you should start oh. making Fallout skins and selling them. <laughs> Gamble them away. <laughs> Gambling your life away. <laughs> Underage Fallout Skin Gambling dot com shut down instantly. Underage Fallout Skin Gamble. Underage Skin wow. Gambling does not sound like. <laughs> I don't. What? Doesn't. I don't think that Google search is really worth. Why? <laughs> <optimizing laughs> like, for you can play. Put that into the into the search engine, and they're just like, no, we're not accepting that. Like, you can't buy that. <laughs> Todd just Howard's now. like, oh my, that is not a feature. <laughs> and uh, lawyers. Joel, did you watch that video I sent you today? Oh yeah, Todd I did, Howard's yeah. sweet little eyes. <laughs> it was yeah, fine. I enjoyed that. Because <laughs> I enjoyed you know, all the zooms, the zooms in. I was like, oh, I love that man. He produces the best <laughs> games ever. <laughs> no, no, I, I do like Todd Howard. It's not like it'd be really great if someone did that with Peter Molyneux. Like all the fable that lies. would be excellent. You'll plant actually, a tree, and the tree will become your like pet, that. and the pet will take care of you your entire life. I actually out. saw a video that was taller. recently with him doing it. It was amazing. Really? It was like. You can actually see it happen before your eyes. And then it just cuts to the actuality and it goes to the connect people going, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and it was like, see, every time he caught Milo through the ball to him, and then it just like cuts over to, to like the Star Wars Connect. <laughs> it was so funny. Well, like they were showing off Project Natal before it became Connect. Oh, and like man. that person drew that picture and then held I it was up like, to Connect this is and the person took it on screen. Yeah, I watched it. I was like, this is the future. Actual connect. Hit the ball. 
<laughs> your cool. legs start going up like this when you're standing there. You're like, what the heck's going on? Cool, Microsoft. <laughs> Let's well, kind of the same thing with PSVR. They're showing it off, like although it works better, <coughs> but they're showing it off, like you're so immersed, you're so immersed. And then we're playing it, and I'm just like picking up the roll of money and balancing on my hand, just going do, 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 do. <laughs> immersion. Things you'll actually be doing. <laughs> Punching oh, man, people's We should faces. just have a topic on all those good VR games we came up with earlier. Ah, oh, that. Oh god. That would I, I. You know, actually, one of my VR games, uh, if I could develop Actually, one. James, could you cue those up and just read some of them off for us? Oh, boy. All right, Joel, one sorry, was just ahead. called Face Your Fears, and it would just basically be 15 Can we not talk about the scenario. last one? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't remember Golden the Golden Showers was. VR? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joel learned a new word today. <laughs> just when he thinks the internet won't, they will. <laughs> no, but mine would be just like called Face Your Fears, so one would just be like Experience Drowning. But it would be like something that slowly fills up water. My idea was with the, the move controllers, let's say you could tell like when your the hands go underwater, it would maybe vibrate or something to kind of feel like it's, you know what I mean? I don't know, something like having put your hands on the table, let knives, like do like a the fing, five finger fillet thing, you know, like the cowboy thing, like various things like spiders or I don't know, or just guns or I don't know, whatever it may be, but just lots of scary little like scenarios. I feel like that would actually be a fun party game. I like to have over. Be minority just, at a Trump rally. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right, James, do you have them? Yeah, let's see. Uh, you can selectively see, read them. Not every single one is necessarily, you know, a gem. Let me go back. Hold on. I missed a couple. I know, Jeremiah, I liked uh, Birth VR POV. <laughs> <laughs> Claw your way out. <laughs> <laughs> the miracle of birth. The miracle of birth oh, VR. Oh, man. <laughs> uh -huh. that, that's, that's why that's why we need good PC VR because that's never going to be on PlayStation but someone on Steam Greenlight is taking notes right now <laughs> like, we could do this delete the notes delete the notes <laughs> alright let's see we had being digested simulator where you get to travel through all the intestines and the stomach and then finally go out the pooper <laughs> uh, Joel said the Sarlacc pit VR which I hated the Sarlacc pit in Return of the Judges, that's that little sound that it made when it grabbed yeah. Lando's leg, like that, like as a kid, that was just like a little Ugh. squeal. <laughs> Jeremiah said high school prom VR, <laughs> I, and my high school prom wasn't bad. Oh, I just I figured like they'll make you slightly shorter than everyone else, and then everyone just turns and looks away awkwardly as you walk up to them. <laughs> you just McDonald's wander around drive-through order taker VR. Yeah, like the person has to sit there and just take your orders. <laughs> they can do Ditch, one for Joel where he has to introduce people. And see how he does for introducing people. Wait, wait, what? Like all your different friends, like just introducing them to different people, like the different stages oh, of friends. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Story to come later. <laughs> Let's see. Gosh. Ditch Digger VR. That sounds, that sounds like a fun time. Uh, fat Flab Scrub VR. <laughs> where you like in VR lift up big flaps of flat and scrub underneath. <laughs> oh, really get out the, the grime. <laughs> It comes with little smell packets. You open one per level. <laughs> you just crack one underneath. You crack number three. <laughs> pits of spiders VR. <laughs> just Quicksand. Getting hit with rocks. And then finally the golden shower. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully no accessories for that one. <laughs> All right. So, uh, announcements. Remember, guys, we are going to three podcasts a month with the fourth podcast being... Uh, CS Tech, and since Dave's can be traveling for Christmas, I think I might actually have to do this CS Tech episode by myself. Unless, uh, Joel, do you want to hop on? I'll oh, join you'll join you. me? Okay, sweet. Me and James are going to do the next CS Tech. It'll be short. Um, and then, don't worry, Joel. So if you have a hard time sleeping when you're visiting family over Christmas, we got you. Mm. All of you guys just two sweet voices to lull me to sleep. <laughs> oh, you know, I was talking about talking with Paul tonight about that. He, was, he, he mentioned on his own, he's like, so about the CS Tech episode, he's like, you know, Dave and John, they're extremely smart. They know what they're talking about with computer stuff. But do they realize that every week when people say, hey, for $400, what should you do? It's the same thing every week. That's what he said. He's like, you buy a GTX 970 or whatever it is. You buy this CPU. He's like, here, here's the potato masher. 
buy this. You have four hundred dollars, <laughs> buy this every week. Don't you have to listen to the next one? You heard the last one. It's gonna be the same for at least a good year. <laughs> you guys should just start copying and pasting the audio from uh, last no, time. We, a lot of the times well, we do say, Mr. So and So, we say a lot of the again. a lot of the times we do say very similar answers to similar questions. But I've also started weeding out a lot of those and just replying to them quickly when they write in. But mm -hmm. it's working because now we have people writing in going, hey. Here's my build. I want to make sure I'm on the right track. And they have our number one picks for hard drive, like power supply, graphics card, everything. Like they've listened, they've learned, they've pretty much nailed it. All they need us to do is look at it and go, cool, dude, you're on the right track. Go for it. So I, I understand what you're saying. It can sound a little <laughs> bit repetitive, but people are learning. So that's the, I, I know you don't care. It's okay. But it, it's working for the target audience and that's what's important. <laughs> Now, uh, since you're looking all smug over there, I just wanted you to know, Joel, that we have gotten enough people have written back to us, tweeted no. at us. Uh. <laughs> Joel gets to make more of the radio story. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. Uh. Just two more episodes. All right. Uh. Now, we're going to start the podcast like we always do with our main topic. And today's main topic is... <laughs> We've wanted to do this one for a while. Let's just put it May mildly. I? Uh, I, I was going to tee you up into it. Uh, okay. This is this is something we've been talking back and forth about for a while. This topic is since, since June. <laughs> since June, uh, where, when everybody else finished Blood and Wine, um, this this topic was spearheaded by Dave uh, for very good reason, and we all have something to say about it because we're all we're all pretty nerdy about games, and we all get attached to games to varying levels. But Dave, what are we going to talk about this evening? This podcast idea came from an article that I read back in June from Wired.com by Jake Muncy. Um, It'll be an article the titled, "Yeah, article titled Saying Goodbye to Games is Getting Who Changed the Title? Who Changed the Title?" <laughs> Sorry, that was me. <laughs> okay, so the actual title of the article is "Saying Goodbye to Games is Getting Harder Than Ever." And Joel, Joel changed the title <laughs> in our document to saying goodbye to games is getting me harder than ever. <laughs> that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I've kind of been, gosh, I don't want to say sitting on this topic now. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> I've been sitting on this topic since June because um, growing up, I had a, a really, um, a, like a, a real love for reading and getting immersed in, in different stories. I discovered fantasy, kind of like Lord of the Rings stuff a little bit later, like when I was a teenager, but always loved to read. And um, reading this guy's article uh, really reminded me of, of how I really was just able to, to enjoy a good book series and that kind of feeling that you get after you finish a good book series where like it's almost like a slight sense of loss because the story is over, the characters are, are finished with their story and there's nothing left. So to start off the discussion, I just want to read a couple of, of paragraphs from uh, Jake, Jake Muncy's article here. Um, which, as you might imagine, coming out in June, was based around the Witcher 3 Blood and Wine expansion pack, uh, one of my all-time favorite series and games. He wrote, About a third of the way into Blood and Wine, a character asks the protagonist, Geralt, if he has any regrets. This isn't an easy question for anyone to answer, but it's particularly troubling here. As the player, I could choose Geralt's response. This is fitting, because in many ways I've become him. Blood and Wine is the second and final expansion for the immense role-playing game The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I've spent more than 100 hours in this world. Shh, get on my level. 300. <laughs> more than 100 hours in this world and accompanied Geralt through the defining <coughs> moments of his life. As the game draws to a close, the question applies to me as well. Do I have any regrets? Like many open-world games, The Witcher 3 seemed boundless at first. Reaching the end leaves me feeling something approaching grief. And that really struck home with me because at the time I was procrastinating actually playing through Blood and Wine like crazy. I was playing like one hour every two weeks because I was doing a, a playthrough for YouTube. But it got me thinking um, about how far games have come in the last couple of decades and how the characters and stories that we're seeing in some cases are are becoming even more um, easy to get attached to than, than books used to be for, for me especially. And thinking about the Witcher series for me, I've talked before how um, I discovered the first game by accident because it was on sale um, during the middle of the, of the house remodel. And we had the bedroom finished and I had no room for my computer. So I had my old laptop. It was like four years old at that point. And I was like, OK, Steam sale. What can I play? Oh, the Witcher one. That's that's an older game. It's a few years old. I'll play that. 
what ended up happening was I loved the game. Um, played like 80 hours the first one, tried to collect everything. Then I went immediately read the books, uh, played the second game in 2011 as soon as it came out. Um, it helped to get me into Skyrim when that came out as well. But going into The Witcher 3 last year, I was coming off of, of five years of being invested in the story of these characters and um, through multiple mediums. And, and just thinking about how I felt at the end of the main game last year, I really think we're at an interesting place with games where we're going to be seeing this more as the writing in games continues to improve, where at the end of some of these larger games where we're saying goodbye to characters that we've really become attached to, it's going to feel like saying goodbye to a good book. I thought it would be a really fun discussion topic that uh, would be relevant for all of us for sure. Oh, it was a good topic idea, Dave. So yeah, I mean, I'm, before yeah. I ran about The Witcher a whole bunch, why don't you, why don't you guys go, go around first? Um, there was only one game that came to mind. Um, because it was actually I was trying I was actually trying to rack my brain for a while to think if there's any game I had a hard time letting go, um, and because oh, I was thinking like with Half Life I'm like I can't really feel like that because it's like <laughs> honestly I'm I'm I would be ready to let it go you know mm. I because I want to if they would just say those. we're not making yeah. it then you could let go <laughs> yeah then I'd be like all right I'm d I, I honestly I'd be okay I'd be like that was an awesome game that was amazing yeah I'm done with it um, the closest one that comes to actually. It wasn't really, it was, I guess it wasn't really hard to let go. It was just, it, it was almost a little bit depressing. Uh, was is the Assassin's Creed um, Ezio games. And those were Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations. And I played also Assassin's Creed 1 as well. It kind of connects. Um, but those games all had the same, one of the, one of the main characters, which was Desmond, who was the future character. And then the past character, which was Ezio, starting from Assassin's Creed 2. When that series ended... I, I, I was really, 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 uh, I really liked his character because Assassin's Creed 2, you play as him very young, like 18 years old. And then Brotherhood, he's like, I think 28, something like that. And he, you know, he's kind of, he's the leader of this, the Brotherhood. And then the last game, he's like 50 something. Um, and so it was really interesting seeing his character grow. And that was throughout, I think, three and a half years of playing this game this, as the series progressed. And the way the series ends, and I'm not going to spoil anything, I'm not going to say it, but it's not what you think it's going to be. He, he Basically, he's not the hero, or he doesn't. he's not going to stop whatever was going to happen in the game. And that was really surprising to me because um, it kind of hit me kind of hard because most games, you're the, the hero and you stop the bad guy and you win. Like, you win the game, you know what I mean? Uh, like, you usually, you're the person that does the most significant action in a game, or usually in a story. Well, this one he doesn't, and he has to, he has to basically realize that someone else, a long, long ways away from him, will be the person that sh should finally close the chapter of this story. And mm -hmm. it was a really kind of depressing thing as he kind of realizes everything he's worked on, it's he's not going to see the fruits of his labor. It's going to have to be someone else, and not the next person, but years and years and years and years down the line of like the Templars and assassins. And it was really fascinating. But I remember. When it ended, I was just thinking, I don't know, it made me think a lot about life. And I was just like, even just growing older and stuff going like, oh man, like he's getting to the end. And like, it just made me think about actors that I really liked in movies and stuff, especially even like Harrison Ford, uh, like some of my favorite actors. I'm like, oh, they're really getting up there. Like they're like, I'm not gonna be able to have them around for that much longer in, in movies that I really enjoy. Like, and then I started thinking like, who do I enjoy watching in movies nowadays? Like just trying to think of other characters I'm like, ah, oh, like I didn't like. It was just, it was just, I don't know. It was like a weird, like feeling going, oh, okay, this is done. I don't know if I'm going to be able to play more Assassin's Creed because I'm like, I really going to mm. miss the Ezio character a lot that it's going to be hard to like jump into a new character. And that's why like, I really did not like Black Flag that much. Like it was just kind of, I don't know. It was okay. I didn't really connect with the character. Um, and it was only till Syndicate that I kind of enjoyed it because I thought the brother and sister were okay. Like they were kind of cool, but it's like not the same. And I was like, man. It's hard to get into Assassin's Creed game anymore because I'm like, oh, it's done. Like, I really miss that character. And like, he was really well written. And yeah, dang it. Well, I felt like, OK, Assassin's Creed's kind of done for me in this in, in the way that like that time has passed. I'm never getting it back again. And Joel, I'm trying to remember, were you talking about also kind of how 
that was about five years of games, right? For the that initial Assassin's Creed series uh, or so. Assassin's Creed two came out in two thousand nine, and then Revelations came out in late two thousand eleven. So I think it's about three years. But I think when I played it, it probably was like a three and a half year ish time period. I'm trying to remember if, if you had mentioned this as well, but the author of the original article was also talking about how you know playing a game for a year and a half with characters that you you invest in, that you kind of find yourself like journeying alongside them, like. Mm -hmm when you play a game for that long, it ends up kind of connecting with, with your life a little bit, like it kind of like in your head, memories kind of connect. Um, and, and nostalgia can be a, a pretty powerful thing. Um, even connected to stuff like games. Yeah. And I think even like, you know, with, you know, you playing Witcher and stuff like that for how games progress, it is a long time. It's usually a long period of time between games. Um, maybe not so much for the Assassin's Creed game because they were kind of pumping them out. <laughs> but luckily, those three games are pretty fantastic. But even yeah, for yeah. I mean, like for Half-Life, I was even thinking, let's say the game still doesn't come out another five years. If they ever make one, five, six years, like where am I going to be at li in life where I'm like, am I going to be able to jump out and like, am I going to enjoy it? Am I even going to want to play it? You know, like it, it's just one of those things where like it's cool seeing games come out. And you're like, oh, I'm like, so excited. But it's like, I'm going to feel so disconnected, like in probably four or five years when another Call of Duty <laughs> comes out, comes mm -hmm. out. I'm, I'm just going to be like what are them kids doing any day? Like they got guns in those games. <laughs> it's going to be like, where am I going to be at? Where it's like, I, I feel like I'm already being getting disconnected from a lot right. of like a lot of things in games. Like even mm. Watch Dogs 2, it's a phenomenal game. And I am actually, I'm like, I'm impressed at how they've done the UI, but it's weird because it's like, it is a hundred percent nowadays. Like ever like it, things that are converted where it used to be like, you get points to win. Now it's like you get how many friends or followers do you have in the game? That's your experience points. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, wow. You know, the way they've incorporated it is cool. So, okay, well done, guys. But it is kind of weird seeing like games go from, hey, I got 20,000 points, James and Mario, to, hey, how many followers you got to level up? Like, what? You know, it's just, it's just, it's weird. <laughs> how many likes did you get on that mission? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. And, you know, and knowing and you, I, Joel, when you get that point and you feel disconnected, you'll probably also start disapproving of whatever new way they've, <laughs> you kids, <laughs> their filth and their likes. But I think, you know, even for Dave, I, I, like, I'm happy for you really enjoying this game series. But yeah, it's, it's, I can see where it can be, it can be rough to let this one go because you are so connected, especially with the books and everything mm -hmm. to go, you're never going to have the first time experience. You're never going to have this experience ever again, Dave. You can play it again sometime a year and you might mm -hmm. re-enjoy it. It's like you almost enjoy every game you play. You can do anything, mm -hmm. but it, you're never going to have this same first experience where you, oh, I know where the twists are coming. I know what this is going to happen, you know? But you're gonna, like, you kind of have the one chance, the one time. I don't know. Me and James, we've talked a million times about Fallout Three. First time getting out of the vault and seeing the apocalypse for the first time and going, "Hey, I can go anywhere." You do kind of have it that one time, and that's it. And uh, it is kind of sad when you're like, "Oh, although it's there's been relived a hundred times." <laughs> <It's sad>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to jump in on what Dave said about like the game, <clears throat> the games going along with you during different points in your life. I think I mentioned this last week. For me, that was. To some degree, The Witcher, because I started playing it in 2008 and then um, then played The Witcher 2 in 2011, I guess, and then read all the books and then played The Witcher 3. Uh, so, you know, I I've probably spent more time with The Witcher than any other work of fiction, I think. I mean, maybe I read maybe more times reading Redwall books, possibly, because there are so many of those. <laughs> that would make uh, a phenomenal game. <laughs> It could, it possibly could, but it also, I thought it could make a phenomenal uh, TV series and it did not. So you never know. But uh, for me, it's kind of the Uncharted games. The first Uncharted, I borrowed it from a friend in college and me and my roommate Chris played it sitting on the couch. Like we were just becoming friends at that point, hanging out, played through Uncharted, real fun adventure game. Second one comes out. We take time off of school. Like we get all our work done <laughs> early so we can clear a couple afternoons and we're playing it, you know, as soon as we get out of classes, we're we're playing Uncharted 2, best friends at this point, playing through it together, having an awesome time. Third game comes out, we're both out of college, I'm married, he lives 10 hours away, I wait a couple months to play it, he drives 10 hours, and we spend the weekend together and play through the game together. And the fourth one comes out, and he's married and has a kid and can't do the travel anymore, and... I'm still married and my wife and I play through it together. And you know, it's, it's just weird thinking about it also because that game is very much about a story coming to a close uncharted four is, and it is weird to think back like 
I thought every game was awesome when I played it, but looking back at them now, they they were I I thought they were awesome for very different reasons because I'm a much different person than I was when I played the first one. But the series is so good that it, I've stuck with it, and I, I've enjoyed each of them. But there are other series that the same thing doesn't happen. Like that was the same fall that Modern Warfare came out, and we played hundreds of hours of Modern Warfare multiplayer. Like we were really good at Modern Warfare <laughs> multiplayer. And I didn't stick with that because those games didn't have a hook to pull me back in past gameplay. And so once you have great gameplay for like enough years in a row, you know, it's, it starts becoming like, oh, Craig, like the gunplay is really solid. Cool. Like there's only so many times that'll pull you back in just on its own uh, before it starts feeling like a rinse and repeat type thing. Um, but, but games with really great narratives still pull you back in. And I think that's what did it for, for me in The Witcher. I'm actually... What I said at the end of uh, of Blood and Wine was I was ready to put the game down. I remember I talked about this a couple times with you guys. Mm-hmm. I was ready to put it down uh, because I just needed to, to put it down, be done, and walk away because they ended the story. And that's not a spoiler, James. I mean, everybody, they talk about that plenty. Like, there is an, there's an definite end to the story. Not a we can never make stories in the future, but this story ends. And I felt like that was... The best time to put it down, but... Oh, we're going to get really corny here. I purposely didn't finish some of the quests. Because <laughs> as long as I don't finish them, I can always just open it back mm. up, and there's still more witchering to do. There's still more monsters to kill. Siri's still out there. Yennefer's still out there. If you pick Triss, you're wrong. Um, mm, and, preach. <laughs> but like, as long as I don't ever finish it, uh, it's not over. And I know that sounds like the corniest thing ever, but that's honestly how I feel at this point. Like, yeah, I, honestly, Jeremiah, I'm 100 percent there with you. And if, if I'm going to be 100 percent honest, there, like, I have a busy YouTube recording schedule, sure. But the reason that we're doing this this podcast in the middle of December, when the game came out in May, is because I strung it out for as long as possible for the main quest. Like, I wouldn't play it for weeks at a time until I could sit down and just play for a couple hours and just be 100% there. I, I didn't want it to end, and I purposefully left a lot of side quests and stuff, so when I'm ready, I can I can go back. 100% there with you. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> James, what have been some uh, some games that have been like that for you? Uh, for me, uh, any RPG, especially with ensembles, mm. and you know one of the things we teased it before is Mass Effect. Not that I thought Shepard was the most amazing character ever written, but you do spend a lot of time getting to know individual characters in every game. And you, you know, you take the friendships, relationships, sometimes physical, um, you take them in different directions, you know, in the game. And, you know, you, you become attached to that crew. You become attached to all the different characters. And, you know, it's it's bad enough for when you have one l- nice long game where you get to really flesh out a story, but when they carry it over multiple games and you start mm-hmm. seeing mm-hmm. these characters again, but then you know, this is it. This is the finality. Like, you know, like Geralt. I mean, this is it for his story. You might see him later, but you'll never get to be him again. Mm-hmm. That to me, it, it's kind of sad because you do feel like you're, you know, becoming a little bit of this character and you feel like you are the one interacting because it is your choices that influences how, you know, the, the different morale goes in your, you know, ship and stuff. So while, you know, a lot of people haven't been so crazy about the ending of Mass Effect 3, to me, it's still, it's, it is, it's a finality of those characters. I don't know if they're going to, any of them will show up in Andromeda. Um, but I know they're going a new direction. Like you don't have to, from what I understand, you don't have to necessarily have played the other ones to get this storyline. Mm-hmm. It's like a relaunch uh, of the series is what it seems yeah. like. And so other games like Knights of the Old Republic, like it was like maybe a 40, 50 hour games, but you spend so much time doing dialogue trees, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it can be a cheap mechanic if not done right. But when it's done well, you do feel like you're affecting stuff, especially something like in Knights of the Old Republic, where you have, you know, you you have your light side, dark side. It influences things, so you try to make good decisions with your crew. Um, yeah, there was a point in that game that like one of my like followers, I think, joined the dark side, and I did. I was like, oh, I felt so bad because I was like, 
I thought I was doing some right things or whatever, but apparently he didn't like approve of something I did, and, you know, and like I pushed him that direction. And I was like, oh, like I got really <laughs> attached to those characters, too. Um, and, and, you know, you watch a movie and a movie generally when it's over, it's like, man, that was a good movie, but you don't mm-hmm. really ache to see that character again unless they're series. So, you know. Man, so fast and so fast and the furious. I, when at that's the end done, of the Fast and the Furious Seven. Who? <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, that that ending. Because yeah. I, th- I um, think it'd be fair <laughs> to say, me and James, we don't like ironically love Fast and the Furious like a lot of people do. Well, I guess I can't speak for you, James, but I think we're on the same page here. Like I, I legitimately love Fast and the Furious. Yeah. And like I, for the last sixteen years, I've loved Fast and the Furious. Uh, so we'll see what happens with this new movie, but uh, <laughs> how are you going to feel when the series is over? Like for done, honestly, I wish it was over now because seven, I, I for the ending series, of seven would have been a good way to go. Yeah. For a out. series that's so mm-hmm. ridiculous and over the top and is so self-aware of how ridiculous and over the top it is. I don't think it's possible to end it better than they ended seven. Like lightning struck. That's especially given the fact that the actor actually passed away. <laughs> I don't think they could have actually ended the series any better than that. And unfortunately, I say unfortunately, they're giving jobs to a lot of people. So I think that's awesome. And as long as they can keep going, having crazy fun with it, go for it. But I don't think from a narrative level, they're ever, I think it's just going to be downhill from here. Like, I, I don't think there's nowhere for that story to go other than, than downhill from here. Yeah. We'll for me, see when it comes me, out. <laughs> I mean, Movies. I'm going to watch it. Movies in general don't do that much for me. It's TV series. I think yep. that like when Lost was over, even as much as I oh, man. despise the ending, it was still sad to see all those characters go because you, you know, you, you grow to love those characters. Yeah. Battlestar um, Galactica. Yeah. Bat- oh, Battlestar James, Galactica. There's that six years of, of theories and talking with friends and everyone you knew was watching it. And it was, <laughs> you wanted to see more of Sawyer and what they were going to do. Oh, that was so, that was a really depressing year and a half afterwards. I was Just like, imagine you I were a Dexter lost. fan. <laughs> so, and, and so when they, when they say, you know, you love Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. And they say, you know, we're coming up with Caprica. You're like, Oh cool. A new series, but I don't get those characters back. I don't get yeah. all that time. I, that's, it's a new story by the, you know, the writers that I love, but it's not a continuation of what I really want to see more of. You know, I'll never get to see Gaius. Again, I'll never get to see, you know, mm. any of those characters. And so, you know, I was I was playing through the Tales uh, Zillia games, which aren't that amazing story-wise, but it is an ensemble car- cast, and you follow all these groups. And at the end of the first game, I was like, man, I kind of want to continue the story. And then I realized, oh, Tales of Zillia 2 continues the story. <laughs> well, those characters are sweet. <laughs> So the, I, I purposely have been kind of sitting back and waiting to to finish the Witcher DLC to put some time in between it to, I guess, get excited about it and just treat it like a new game as opposed to f- pushing through to the end and then just being done. Well, James, you know, too, at the end of the main quest, it's almost like it's a it's a shock. It's honestly a shock because the, the whole main story is so character focused when you beat the main quest you're put back at the Witcher castle and a pop-up comes up. The adventures of Geralt of Rivia are over for now. And it's like, because the main quest is over and we know you might have side quests left to do. We've kind of reset the world to right before the beginning of the last chapter of the main quest, but all the characters are gone. So you can just run around and do side quests, but it's like all of a sudden, all these people that you've been adventuring with and fighting for and, and the, you've experienced the whole game with all these characters. They're all just gone instantly. Yeah, it's really... And the, <laughs> the world is empty. And, like, that was shocking me. Like, oh, man, like, I, it's lonely. It's really lonely. Well, yeah, there's a lot a to do, but it doesn't feel... It feels kind of cheap compared to doing yeah. it while you still have that sto- overarching story. Yeah. So to, to put a little bit of a, of a cap on this... I haven't gone yet. Dave hasn't gone yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought all of you were talking about <laughs> the Witcher. Excuse you, sir. Uh, all right. Well, I wasn't necessarily <laughs> capping it. I just, I had like a, a direction for scope. Go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. No, are, are you sure? You don't want to go first? Um. Well, I kind of went with my stuff. I mean, I, there's been books, TV shows, and games that, that have made me feel this way. All I was going to say was I feel like we feel this way. Not It's not just like a game specific thing or, or a movie specific thing or TV shows or books mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
it's, I think it's just human nature. Anytime something comes to a close, even if that thing was good, and even if the thing that comes after it is going to be good, there's still that weird feeling of, you know, this is it. And even if I'm going to be happy later and everything's going to be awesome, I'm never going to be here again. And I think that's just a really powerful thing. That's why people feel nostalgic about stuff. I mean, that's why so many people look back fondly on uh, high school or college or the group of friends they had when they were younger is because even if stuff's good now, they remember that good thing they used to have and they miss it. And nostalgia is, is an incredibly powerful drug in our minds. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's very, very powerful. That's pretty much how they're selling everything to us old people now, <laughs> us old gamers. <laughs> I was I read some reviews for the the Witcher statues that I have been picking up for my birthday that finally got here and the uh the reviewer of these these pretty nice statues started out the review with a rant about Funko Pop and he's like these bastards are destroying like everything I love with their their copy and paste figurines he's like this is what I want not all the same Funko Pop ruining everything it was just it struck me as really as really funny um but I think before I, I, you know, wax poetic about Witcher for a minute, I want to talk about two other games that really <coughs> just just um, really struck home for me, honestly. And and one big point that I want to pull out of this discussion is giving it some thought over all these months leading up to this topic. I really think that that games can connect with you with their stories and their characters in ways that, like you guys have been saying. Movies and even shows cannot and I think a big part of it is the amount of time that you spend with games And it, it's a lot like a good book series a good book series like Game of Thrones is still ongoing It may be ongoing for another 10 years. He's he's writing really slow, but uh, I mean you spend a lot of time with with a good book series and While shows and and movies can start to approach that I think nothing is as close to the level that you can immerse yourself, honestly, to use the word not ironically, in a game. Like, games games can stay with you for a long, long time. And even shorter ones. I had a couple of shorter ones I wanted to point out that really stuck with me. Um, I got that same feeling of, like, I just need to kind of set this aside and mull it over at the end of Bioshock Infinite, which uh, I love that game. I think it's still not my favorite Bioshock game, but this, that story in particular was very, very character-driven. Um, and you became very attached to the characters, and, and there were a couple of twists near the end where it just really got you thinking. That was a very introspective end, uh, the Bioshock Infinite ending, that that really just left me going, huh, like, that was quite an experience. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to play Bioshock Infinite again. I may play some of the other ones again, but just that story in particular, when it was over, I just kind of stepped back and said, huh, that's a lot to think over. And then the journey of The Last of Us, um, that was a game that probably took me about Maybe not 30 hours to beat. It wasn't a super long game, but it was enough time where um, I really connected with their story. And while the ending wasn't necessarily super sad, um, it wasn't super happy either. And it left you kind of in a realistic way saying, you know, things things have been better. They're not bad now, but but man, we've been through a lot, basically. And, and I think that's kind of the, the way that I was looking at The Last of Us ending. It was just like, wow, th that was a lot to go through, a lot to think over. But The Witcher 3 in particular, I spoke about this some in, in my video last year, about 100 podcasts since. <laughs> um, the way that, that CDPR set up The Witcher 3 story-wise, um, they had the rights to the games and all the characters in the books for since the beginning, obviously. But they were so very careful with the characters. In Witcher 1, there's only a handful of characters from the books that are actually there. Mm -hmm. Witcher 1 is, is tons of stuff that CDPR just came up with on their own to add to the world. Um, from what I understand, their their plan all along was to save some of the most important characters in Geralt's life for the third game, when hopefully they have enough money and the technology had advanced where they could do an open world game. That was their plan all along, was characters like Ciri and Yennefer were not going to have them for multiple games because they're too important, we want to do them right. So even in The Witcher 2, Yennefer being a huge part of Geralt's story, you only hear bits and pieces about her from, from merchants, from some of your friends, because Geralt has conveniently amnesia. But there's so many hints leading up to what's to come. And the way that, that CDPR laid the story out in 3, as soon as they announced the third game and showed the first trailer where it's finally, you're going to be searching for your adopted daughter. 
and you're going to be searching for the sorceress that you finally remembered, Yennefer, who is just an absolute integral part of Geralt's life. And, and finally, in the third game, it's it's all this important stuff from the books coming to head. I mean, The Witcher 3 could have had gameplay, like the worst hack and slash gameplay from 15 years ago. But if it had the same characters and story, it would still be one of my all-time favorite games because of how they, how carefully they treated the characters and how carefully the build-up was. And it was so, so well done. Like I already said, at the end of the main <clears throat> quest, when they're, they're just suddenly gone, it's lonely. It is, it is so lonely. Even in the expansion packs, and I'll keep things vague for James, um, there's a few moments where you run into characters from the books and it's they're so good at lining their already good standalone story with the most excellent fan service when a, a very important character that hasn't been in any of the games shows up a character from the books uh in blood and wine i, I did a let's play of it i i actually freaked out i'm like is that so and so like no that no they wouldn't is it really i can't believe they put this character in here and it was very, very um, appropriate, too, that at the end of Blood and Wine, during a, a very introspective conversation, um, Geralt is talking to that character to end the series. And the character asks Geralt, um, you know, what are you going to do now? You think you you deserve a rest, maybe? And Geralt breaks the fourth wall. Minor spoiler, James. Geralt breaks the fourth wall, looks right into the player's eyes, like through like through the, like, like the, the screen and says, yeah, I think maybe it's time for a rest. And it just cuts to the credits. Um, Wow. Just an amazing, amazing game. Hard to let go of some of these experiences now, for sure. When do you think you'll actually be the final, like, I'm putting that game to rest? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I've got a lot left to do. I'd like to 100% it as long as I don't actually, you know, get... Um, you know, tired of the game itself. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see that happening, but if I end up doing too many question marks, maybe it'll get old, but uh, yeah, I honestly, I think it'll be installed for years to come. I, the reason that we did this podcast last week, we kind of left it for this week, is because Jeremiah was helping me set up my surround sound speakers, and, and finally, what I've been wanting to do for like a, a <laughs> month or two now, I finally got to do Friday, is I just turned on the surround sound and I, I just sat down and I just did free roam. I just explored did a few little mini side quests just to see like now that I've beaten the main quest, does the game still connect with me? And I, I was just instantly back there. It's still, still very lonely with a lot of the main characters missing, but the nostalgia is still very powerful. I think it, it'll remain that way for a long time. Anyone have anything else they want to contribute to this topic before we move on? Well, it was a very good topic, Dave. Yeah, Thank you very, very much. Good, and uh, Finally. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be talking about plenty of this in the future. Once James finishes uh, the DLC, we might have to have like another another post-mortem on The Witcher 3. It'll be like two years since it came out. <laughs> it's like a Geralt recovery group. We're just and we all talk about it crying. every once in a while. Yeah, we'll have to get Debbie in on it too. All right, but now it's time to talk about what are you playing this week? Who cares about The Witcher 3? What have you been playing lately? The Witcher 3. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dave, so what have you been playing lately besides The Witcher 3? Um, I'm continuing with the Mafia 3 story. I've discovered that with the combat on hard, um, it, you can kind of go quickly. And, and as long as you keep the combat moving and don't abuse the crappy AI, it's still pretty intense. And the story is so well written. I'm actually now thinking about doing a little bit of a, a commentary on the game because... I think there's a lot more there than I expected because the overall presentation is so rough around the edges. But the man, the voice acting in the story is is very, very enjoyable. Nothing I've said it before, nothing like groundbreaking, but just very well done. I, I think I might actually beat Mafia Three. Um hmm. I, I've been pleasantly surprised. And the big Battlefield One patch came out yesterday and I'm very tired today because I spent like four hours in spectator mode. Uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> it it fixed all of our squad join issues, or at least it appeared to. Uh, frame rates appeared to be better. CPU usage was better. Like, it, it seemed like everything. There weren't that many big problems with the game, but it seems like everything got a nice little buff. I didn't notice any massive balancing changes, but I don't think I'm good enough to notice them anyway. But it seemed all positive. They haven't messed it up yet. <clears throat> yeah. Although I was telling Joel. Dice being dice, they cannot pull off a balancing move in one patch. They nerfed the um, the mortars so hard in the first patch, and now 
They've backed off of it like 25%. I guarantee you, next patch, mortars get tweaked again, and then probably once more before they're finished. Um, they nerfed the, the Martin Henry single-shot rifle this patch. Everyone's complaining because literally no one thought there was a problem with that rifle, and they nerfed its one-hit kill. It's the only rifle in the game that can do, that can do that. So there's now like a, it's like a 4% a chance of getting a one-hit kill body shot, and it's a single-shot black powder rifle. Why would you use that now with a like 4% chance of getting a one-hit kill? I guess that's like, that's like all it could do. Dice just cannot seem to balance something like <laughs> gently. It's always like, hmm, we're seeing a lot of people use that Hunter 10 shotgun. We're going to reduce the damage by 68%. Let's just see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, uh, James, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing Final Fantasy 15. How is it? Um, I'm liking it. I'm about 16 hours in. Um, That's the like more open world one, right? Yeah. Or it looks open world. Yeah, it's it's open world. Um, How is it? It's, uh, I, can't, I can't see that it be it for everybody, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking the characters. And you do get to... Like... In, in, in between doing like the main missions, you can just go off and look for treasure and stuff. So it's kind of cool. But some of the places you don't want to necessarily, even though you can see it in the distance and you can get there, you don't necessarily want to go in because you go in and it's like you're level eight and they're like level 20 and you're, you last all of like 30 seconds. <laughs> so, um, been playing that playing uh dragon's dogma. I think I'm like 25 hours into that enjoying that still and uh i just bought steam world heist i've been playing that and that's the uh that's the it's it's kind of a turn-based action game based on the steam world dig series um, oh, okay but it's actually really well done and it's the the levels are very digestible um so you know, you go in, you do like a one small mission, get your upgrades, and then you can just call it quits. So it's it's pretty cool. And then played some really boring Rocket League the other night. Mark and I were trying so hard to get people to get salty or just even respond. We were doing uh, Christmas carols, but we were doing them like doing monotone notes, but in also doing them dissonant instead of doing like <laughs> thirds. So it was just like this irritating noise, like sounded like monk chanting Christmas carols and people just were not responding at all. It was really, it was really sad. Oh. All right. Uh, Joel, how about you? Uh, lots and lots of Skyrim mm -hmm. and lots and lots of, uh, Watch Dogs 2. Anything new on either of those? Um... I, I got Watch Dogs for, for Joy as well, and we've been playing through co-op. It's super fun. And it's funny, It's the game is a lot harder than the last game. A lot harder. Like, you get seen, you really have to work hard to, like, not get seen. <laughs> because you're going to get shot really fast. And, you like, you have very little health. And, and it's interesting, because I was looking like, oh, yeah, you're going to upgrade your health or shields or, you know, or body armor. Nope, none of that. You only unlock all uh, other like tools and stuff, but you have like a cool little drone, a little like little uh, remote control car driving around to do ha hacking stuff and everything. It's, it's a really, really well-made game. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. Like it, it, it has less of a, of a cool vibe. If that makes sense. Like the first one was very like a little bit more darker and like, I'm a hacker and you know, by night and all that kind of stuff. This was more like, <laughs> I don't know. This is hacker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> like, I like that guy's voice. I like the character from the first game, honestly. Um, and so I wasn't really looking forward to this game in the sense of just the characters. I was like, I don't know. They just kind of seem like, Hey, we're 18 year olds and we're hacking stuff and we're cool. We have drones, but the stories are way more deep than I thought they were going to be. Uh, and even though like the mood of the game doesn't feel as dark as the other one where you have like this, you know, I don't know, cool cloak, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, but the character in you know the mean? first one, he's a terrible character. Like, I'm just sad. I'm sad about everything. I'm yeah. going to mope in my cloak. <laughs> but like, he, he kind of looked pretty badass, like with the gun and everything. He, but he, he just looked, looked like, like a pedophile. <laughs> no, I don't think he looked out. You know, he, he, he looked more like a, I don't know, like a. It was like shooter. a bounty hunter or something like School that. Shooter. Flasher, okay, yeah, yeah. Not a this one, flasher. this one, to be honest, it's like wearing summer clothes in, in GTA five, except now you're a hacker. So it feels yeah. kind of weird where it's like, 
I don't know, you got like this little like cool laptop bag with you and he uses it to like control the remote control, but it's just like, you don't look cool or badass really because you're just like wearing like whatever clothes, you know, like just summer clothes and hat. It's like, it just feels weird. But the game itself is freaking polished and really well done. So enjoying it. Cool. Freaking polished. Uh, freaking after, polished. even after all of my ranting, I beat Infinite Warfare. Oh. So it got surprisingly better as it went along i say surprisingly Ooh. better to like it seemed like they really were trying to do something different with call of duty and they did do some different stuff with call of duty this year don't don't, don't. i'm not gonna spoil it okay because like I, even I just like play it. gameplay mechanics and other things like it felt different now i will say this um having recently beat titanfall 2 i don't think call of duty is the king of shooter mechanics anymore like that's that's kind of always been its claim to fame is no matter how stupid the you know the story might have been one particular year. The shooting mechanics have always been like rock solid. These are the some some of the best there are. Honestly, I thought Titanfall 2 was better because both games, for a strictly mechanical perspective, because both games have like jet packs and running along walls and a lot of the similar futuristic stuff. With Titanfall 2, it felt more like Doom, like a dance. Like you're always moving forward, always going from engagement to engagement. Um, you know, Titanfall is a lot of things like you can jump, slide across something, hit the floor, slide past somebody, shoot a couple people, keep moving. Like you never have to stop moving. And, um, infinite warfare felt a lot more stilted by comparison. Um, my only other main gripe is that it's a, it's a disaster on PC. Well, as usual, Activision, like they do not care about the PC versions and they talk each year like, oh, no, we've learned, we've learned. And then there's just so much idiocy. Like, it's just broken. We've it's learned a, PR. <laughs> and some stuff's like, oh, man, <laughs> even they, the, a patch came out. It used to be if you change resolutions, I think I told you about this, it would click through each resolution one at a time and actually change resolution. So it would take you like three minutes to get to the right one. Just stupid stuff. They fixed some of that. But <laughs> um, I think the, the biggest bad thing about the game, and it's a good game, the biggest bad thing about the game is it starts out too much like Call of Duty. Like, they want to break new ground, but they're still holding on to too much of what Call of Duty is, and they're trying so hard to be ridiculously over the top that, like, the first hour and a half was just monotonous. Uh, I've Probably, like, the first two hours was just monotonous. And there were monotonous sections later on where it's just like, so much violence! Ah! <laughs> or I'm like, I get it, okay? Like, you're trying to tell a good story. Just calm down. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, I feel like with just, but but I mean, it seems like the market kind of agrees. It hasn't been selling as well as previous Call of Duties. It looks like the plateau has been reached. We'll see what happens next year. And I uh, think I wonder if it's it's just more plateauing, not the the fact that this was not a great game, but just more in general. You know what I mean? Just like oh, it's another yeah. Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're getting to the point where like people who who when Modern Warfare blew up, people who were teenagers are now our age like they're older they're married they might have kids like it has to constantly bring in new people every year or it's going to naturally fall off and i think it's not pulling in new people as well as it used to because I, I was sad for assassin's creed syndicate because i think that game got a bad rap because if that game had gotten delayed a little bit longer and then released mm -hmm. it would have just because it came out so quick after the crappy one before it that was just unity that just ran like garbage and it's just like all the stupid, you know, mobile app in, and app purchases oh, and all that stuff. It really that. ruined the whole reputation. And then this game came out soon. Syndicate was really, really well made. It was a really great game, uh, especially going from, I think, Black Frag. <laughs> you, said, you said Black Frag, so that was close. You did it. You're okay, Joel. You're good. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Jeez. Woo! I thought I made it easy. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just the pirate game. <laughs> uh, whatever. You Just get say the four. <laughs> you Assassin's Creed four. <laughs> Assassin's Creed four. Thank you. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> that completely and with that, it's, it's now time for the news. It's time for the news. <laughs> news time. So uh, this is a, this is a cool one. Age of Empires two just got a balancing and uh, network updates patch to make the PC, the HD version, work better. And they've announced an expansion. Rise of the Rajas is a new DLC available for pre-order now. Comes out in a couple weeks. This game is like 16 or 17 years old. Yep. And they're making new content for it and coming out with 
a couple patches that should actually make it uh, easier for me to to play multiplayer. You can now save and properly load multiplayer games, uh, which has been a problem for a while. Like you'd have to play nice. the game all in one Ooh, shot. We should play again <coughs> soon. Oh, you ready? Have you recovered? Well, I'm ready to die week? again. That is, if I can get John, me, Joy, Dave, James, all of I, us. I was gonna say because you had you, you. <laughs> you had John and Joy last time, and I know, matter. but we need to add Dave and James. Well, if you get all start. of you, then uh, then I get both my brothers. Oh dear, no! <laughs> if you are allowed ten minutes to prepare. We're allowed an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like all of our alliances like falling apart, just like from panic. Like, uh, are we ready? That's like, what John what? did. He was supposed to bring his troops in to help me as I'm getting slaughtered, and I was like, "Are you coming?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm coming." All the while, he's bringing all of his troops down to a secret little base and just <laughs> left me behind. They they had a strong unified front until I smote them. I smote them on the rocks, and then they all started panicking and looking out for their own self interests. Oh, that was not fair. Anyway. Uh, Zen, AMD's new processor line coming out quarter one 2017. A lot of people are really hyped for it like they are every time AMD says they have a new processor, which is totally going to beat Intel this time. But uh, they showed off some actual benchmarks this time. They ran them live and they provided the benchmark files for other people to download. So if they're cherry picking, they're a little more self-confident about than they usually are. So this might actually mean good stuff's going to happen regardless. Competition's good. Zen's official name is Ryzen or Risen, I'm guessing. Um, the main chip is going to be a eight core, 16 thread and it, it's SMT cores like, uh, Intel. So like actual eight actual cores, 16 actual threads with a 95 watt TDP, a lower TDP than the 6,900 K, which is the competing Intel chip. Uh, and they ran some tests where at 3.4 gigahertz for both processors, the risen chip beats Intel slightly. So we'll see what happens in actual benchmarks. Oh, man. That, that Intel chip is $1,000. So if this is a $500 or $600 chip that's actually eight cores and 16 threads, overclocks well and has a low TDP, I mean, I could switch back to AMD pretty happily. Like, for, yeah. that would make a huge difference for video rendering and stuff. So it looks like IPC, which is always uh, has been their, their worst bit, is their IPC. How fast and strong each core is has always sucked in comparison to Intel. It looks like they might be getting a handle on that, so cool things coming out there. Other cool stuff. This doesn't warrant a full news item, but LG has announced their first HDR computer monitor. There have been 10-bit computer monitors for a long time, uh, but LG is bringing the first official HDR compatible, like compatible with HDR10, the standard. Uh, that monitor is likely coming out sometime in the next year, although I don't think any PC games officially have HDR patches yet. Just like with the PS4 Pro and Xbox One and everything, HDR is so new, Honestly, I wouldn't make any purchasing decisions just based on HDR yet. Like you're, you're probably in for bad time because even nice HDR TVs like ours doesn't support the full brightness range that you need to be real HDR, which I think is a thousand nits of brightness. I think ours will hit six or seven hundred, and crappy <laughs> HDR TVs will hit like three fifty. That'll, that'll be the next. That'll be a real HDR. On yeah, exactly. HDR. <laughs> True HDR, HDR plus, HDR, HDR plus platinum, HDR. UHDR. <laughs> like ugh. HD HDR, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but high but definition that, actual HDR. Item. So uh, plus. Uh, <laughs> a new standard, a new fancy thing that actually has caught on now is Dolby Atmos. So that's there's typical surround sound, but Atmos or DTS X is also uh, having height speakers. So you can have two or four speakers either in the ceiling or on top of your speakers pointed up, and that adds extra height to recordings. I was going to say depth. You know what I mean. Uh, apparently it's not going to totally revolutionize your sound system, uh, but it is pretty cool. And if you've got the budget for a nice home theater, it does add a bit to it. Well, uh, Dolby Atmos support is coming to windows 10 and Xbox one next year, which is really cool, especially because the Xbox one S is still one of the cheapest ultra HD Blu-ray players. There is, it supports, uh, HDR 10 and 4k and now it'll support Dolby Atmos. So that's pretty cool. I had Dave. my coworker at work bought a H, uh, like a pretty nice uh, Samsung a KS UHD the, TV. KS eight thousand. I have no clue what model it was. That's what they, we just they, got. They 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 paid extra to get their the nicer okay. SUHD mm -hmm. Samsung, K and then they wanted a, a a Blu-ray player to go with it. And the guy at Best Buy tried to tell them to get an Xbox, and they went with a <laughs> a Samsung brand. Yeah. Like, no. Uh. <laughs> Dave, although, although the oh, top of the bottom, are they going to start coming out with like carpet speakers? 
Like you have to like sit on the, the well. There's already one. there's already like butt kickers that can go underneath your seats to help with low end stuff. So who knows? That's that's what I want. I just, actually, I just want to be in a, a, a chair that just does everything. I need. You want a massage like, chair, like a heated and cooled massage chair that also ties into your sound system. <laughs> yep. Cool. Might be cheaper just to get a chip in your brain that just makes you think all that's happening. I well, that's what I want. We're not there yet, but that's what I want. The Matrix. You want to live in the Matrix. <laughs> I want to be the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the one. Controlling James is like, the look, Matrix. the machines were taking care of people. There were families. They were. You cared guys had for. it good. <laughs> Did you see that steak? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave. I'm actually. I can't believe I forgot to put this news item in. What do you got for us? This one caught my eye because <clears throat> uh, this year I have seen the words Nvidia driver hotfix far too many times. Oh my goodness, it's been ridiculous. I I'm so disgusted with them right now. Since like the beginning of October, I think Nvidia has released three just hot fixes for drivers since October. Um, really bad. On the other hand, AMD just launched. Wow, where do they come up with the names for these things? Their Crimson <laughs> Relive update. Crimson is it? Crimson the GeForce Experience. They call theirs Crimson because they're Team Red. Okay, so that's, okay, thank you, thank you. And then relive, just, relive like Shadow Play. Relive these things that happened to you. Ooh. And, and apparently they're all dumb Sh names. Yeah, they're all dumb names. And speaking of Shadow Play, that got rebranded too. Now it's Nvidia Share instead of Shadow Play. Really? Yeah, it's still Shadow Play. I don't care. It'll Can never. It'll never be just Nvidia like just Share like we're Play. not using the Metro interface on Windows. Anyway, AMD just launched their their big software update. Mm -hmm. But what caught my eye is it's their big once a year software update, and it has some pretty cool stuff. Speaking of Shadow Play, which is the actual name I will continue to use. I mean, it's a it's a verb at this point. Hey, Shadow yeah. Play it. Yeah. Uh. I mean, it makes sense. Shadow recording. Anyway, <laughs> I'm totally off track now. It makes me so annoyed. <laughs> um, AMD has finally kind of like NVIDIA did roll their recording software into their main software suite. So no more downloading that NVIDIA Raptor program, which I tried before I, I decided to stick with NVIDIA for a good while, a couple years back. Um, it's now part of their kind of dashboard, just like GE Force experience. Um, their new recording setup, which is... Is it relive? It's probably relive, not relive. It's relive. Yeah, it's capitalized weird though. Like it's, it's capitalized like re dash live, but yeah. Anyway, um, apparently like shadow play, <laughs> it has a roughly four percent impact on your FPS, so that's great. Your GPU does all the heavy lifting. I haven't tried it for myself, but people seem to be quite impressed with it. So because shadow play was honestly one of the shadow play and, and drivers were the two big things that. <laughs> Had me stick with NVIDIA. Well, <laughs> and I got to say, on the driver's front, AMD's new drivers, they're getting like 5 to 10% bumps in most games on most of their newer cards. Like the 1060 was a definitely a better car than the RX 480 when it came out, but it cost more. Well, now RX 480s are going for like 180 on sale some of the time, and they are neck and neck in most cases. So mm. the thing about AMD really improves their drivers over time, or they have been for like the last three or four years. Also, Dave, Relive has a higher audio bit rate than Shadow Play. Well, now we'll see if it actually sounds good, but it's uh, it's higher bit rate. Shadow Play sounds worse than it should at that bit rate anyway. So, like I said, that doesn't necessarily matter. That's true. Well, if they just added split audio tracks, I would definitely be test driving an oh. AMD card. They need to come out with a high end card though, because the 480 is not good enough to replace either of our cards. So. Just on a side note, Jeremiah, you'd be proud of me because my Shadow Play footage has been sounding a so. lot better recently. Because I have been uh, doing a slight vocal levelizer. Is that the right word? Just level compressor? levelizer? Compressor. Yeah, there we go. Compressor on uh, tracks that have my mic mixed in with you guys on TeamSpeak. And it really helps because my mic is generally like 30% louder. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to, to balance that. But just a quick compression while it takes extra time and work really helps to make everything clear. So. Oh, Dave, what will you do without hair works? Mm. Uh, enjoy those extra 30 FPS, uh, but, but beard but and hair. There's, and there's AMD. There's AMD true hair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, Dave. Wh wh what are you gonna do if you do no, let's go? Not, let's just not. Let's. This is a. Oh, no. you just want You just want him to convert Joel, to AMD. What, what, we know. What's your question? What's your question? What would you do? So if it's like a game, like Witcher Four comes out, and you're with AMD. And you can't have that special. Dave, Dave would have two cards. He would physics. just switch him out before he play, started playing. 
Oh yeah, be like, I, I oh, would, Witcher I time. Would... Better switch the card out. Care. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Witcher Four <laughs> released with with the most features, I would buy that card immediately. Like swipe the credit card. And then I'll sell the old card later. Getting the new one is the important part. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how you do all your upgrades now anyway, though. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, mean like specifically for, for Witcher again. Oh, yeah. I did yeah. last year twice. No, I mean, there's th- money doesn't even really matter. <clears throat> Pre-orders matter. That's that's basically where you'll be at. I mean, I'm not going to pretend like I'll be a lot better when it comes to the Witcher, but yeah. Speaking of which, no 1080 Ti rumors for a while. Been waiting to hear about it. I'm selling enough stuff in this office remodel. I might be in, in the in the mood. I don't know though, because for a while, uh, 1080 rumors were about as bad as Star Wars script rumor videos. I've seen Hello Greedo posting a few thumbnails a day of like oh, of the, the, the awful. YouTube. Yeah, Episode Eight details revealed. Luke final fight revealed. Don't like. Don't even say anything. I don't even want to hear no, any of no, this. No, Joel. Joel, it's, it's none all of it's true. It's, it's, all, it's clickbait. all clickbait. Oh, I know. But just in case, by the off chance, some of it is slightly true. Oh my gosh! <laughs> just don't. <laughs> Speaking of which, again, not nearly as bad as when someone else spoiled episode seven for me last year. I have already gotten mild spoilers for how one. People do it to you. You never know when some dick is gonna be like, "Oh, someone I heard you. sent you a message." Uh, a comment. So, Who is oh, it? Well, nobody Wait, we know. Re- real uh, quick, that reminds me. Joel, do not play Battlefront until yeah. you watch the movie. Because people are changing their avatars oh, yeah. to spoilers. So, but anyway, oh, yeah, I was yeah, going to say, Joel. Not, I haven't checked all, anything. I'm only mild spoilers, Facebook, everything. And they're all good. And they're all good. Everything's fine. So. Oh, I, I've heard. it's. I, all I've seen is that people are saying, like, Empire Strikes Back. That's what people are saying. So I'm like, all right. I don't think it's going to be as good as Empire Strikes Back. But you're going to be it. as good as it in my family. I've only heart. looked up one spoiler based on a conversation that you and I had, Joel, at length about the movie. <laughs> all right, all right, we're moving on. We're moving on. Squeeze out those Star Wars rumors, Joel. Squeeze out those Star Wars. Joel, at, at this time tomorrow, Wars. within 24 Wait, hours, you'll have to finish the movie. I am closing our YouTube chat. F that. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Did not think about that. Good. I anyway, didn't right, that much, not so. get on the internet. All right, James. Uh, what's your oh, what's your news update? What's going on? With, uh, uh, this is just really quick. Uh, Nintendo Microsoft released a patch, oh. which no big deal, right. except they've upped the speed of their download. I don't remember what it was oh. at um, before, but right before I got on, um, I was downloading Lost Odyssey, which is free right now. Um, if you have because of, because of their milestone of hitting 300 games for backwards compatibility. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, and it was at 22 megabits per second, which I that's, think is pretty fast for a console. That's not bad at all. Um, and they're saying that um, if you're under 100 megabits, uh, they'll give you about a 40% increase in download speed. Anything, like if you're over 100, you can get up to 80% faster downloads. So, pretty sweet. Nice. All right, um, and what's going on with Nintendo. There's an I mean, event in January, and okay, there's still nothing new. Well, we need the rumors, James. We need the rumors. Uh, from what I heard, they're gonna have it, have it placed in a few select locations to be able to play. Mm-hmm. That might be the only way to play it next year. If what it's game, anything, if it's ba- been- if it's based on the, the NES Classic Edition, that might be the only way you can play it for the whole year. Uh, what game little- has sure. been canceled on Wii and is now only coming out on I'll Switch. let Joel tell this one because he's real excited about it. Oh, um, crap. Uh, Ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah, the people that made Banjo-Kazooie, uh, th- that game, it was going to come out on Wii U. I remember seeing on the Kickstarter thing. Um, did you see, they did you see why they canceled it? I didn't see why, actually. It, the only thing I saw, I saw a headline. It said it was because of technical reasons. <laughs> No. Like technically they just didn't feel like making it for system <laughs> selling. Technical <laughs> problems indeed. <laughs> Isn't that kind of the whole problem with the Wii U? Technical <laughs> problems. We just didn't get around to finishing it. Technically we could do it. it was like, it's okay. It. We had two games come out this year, guys. It's fine. You did your best. We'll see you in twenty nineteen. When I was talking with a participation pa- sticker. <laughs> when I was talking with my uncle about the the switch tonight, uh we were both talking out like, you know, I don't really care to have third party games on the switch like me personally like i'm not going to probably mm. choose a third party game to play on it but i think it's so important that the game the system be good enough to have actual decent third party support or the system so cool whether it's not powerful enough to have regular ones that everyone else wants to just get games on it 
It's because mm-hmm. that makes the system more popular, which makes Nintendo want to even make more games on it. You know what I mean? To make it more profitable. So, because because you know, I'm I'm pretty much buying Nintendo games or Nintendo systems for Nintendo games. That's what all I really care about. But if it's not powerful enough for any other games to go on it, it's just not going to sell well. I am excited about the Switch because I think I think it's a cool idea, especially especially if it shows something like Skyrim running, or just playing a game like that and going, oh cool, I'll just bring it upstairs, play it on the couch upstairs, or I'll pull the control off, me and Joy will play Mario or something like that, or at the beach or in a hotel or whatever. That sounds really fun, but. The, the only knows? rumors, the only rumors I saw lately were that um, it, it'll be able to potentially emulate GameCube games, mm. based on a, uh, some leak, which I Ooh. think is, I mean, if they can release those on a virtual console, I, I would buy them. I would buy a few of the games. That get my attention. Rogue um, Squadron, please. The Ooh. only other rumor I saw was that it's not as powerful as the PS4. That's believable. Well, that, I mean, based on, that, based on that it least, might be old or yeah. based on the um, the old NVIDIA chips instead right. of the newer. Uh, God, what are they called? AMD. Is it AMD? No. AMD no. is the current gen consoles. No, no, no. Oh. But it's, they're, they're, they're rumored to be doing NVIDIA. GPU oh, the Tegra. The Tegra chips. Yeah, it's based on it's rumored Mobile. to be on the, based on the old, not the new X2. Well, they don't need, would, they don't need any good processing power. Limited. They can just use Xbox's cloud computing that they're using for all their games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Watch Dogs 2 needs, yeah, yeah. Or, or Watch Dogs 1 <laughs> needs to compute all that all the detail in the world, in the cloud. What ever happened to Crackdown? Is that like a, 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 still a thing? I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know why that's being made, because it didn't even really sell well, the first one, I thought. Like, it wasn't great. Like... I don't think I've ever heard one person go, man, where's Crackdown 2? Can't wait no, for that oh, I've game. Heard, I've heard plenty of people like Crackdown. They should probably just give up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how well it's sold, but I've heard, I think it's just kind of like a cult classic. Like the people who like it really like it and they're very vocal about it and they don't understand why won't people make pad upon, you know, kind of similar thing. <laughs> the market spoke. But anyway, it's now time for mail time. Now you can write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com to be a part of the show. Uh, this week, we don't even have any actual mail, but we asked you guys to leave comments or tweet at us and tell us what games you think you'll be playing 10 years from now. Joel, what's the skeptical look for? Well, you just like jumped into so much mail time. We got like, I, I usually do mail time, but you just oh, like, you just whoosh, right through oh, into it. I'm sorry. Oh, he, he feels no, betrayed. You don't, here, just, you don't deserve it this week. Me. Oh, man. You don't oh, deserve wait, it this did week. Did they tweet this time? <laughs> <laughs> Joel, you have the chat closed so you can't see what the, the chat is doing. You're like, mail time for you. <laughs> Solo links in the chat's got your back. <laughs> I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking. I, I'm actually like pissed at myself thinking, crap, I could have been spoiled. Sure. <laughs> no. We could so, have go been. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So if, anyway. you, if you ever lose a bet, would you ever say vape time? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, a weird stranger <laughs> says she'll probably be playing Magic Castle of the Lost Knight. Mm-hmm. I don't think we got any real answers. Uh, Dearly Bethany says, I'll still be clearing the dust out of my Nintendo Harvest Moon. And I asked follow-up question, and that is the N64 version of Harvest Moon. So I suggested that she play uh, Stardew Valley. Uh, Levi says, Ocarina of Time. It's still pure cocaine. And a guy named Mark said, I'll be playing Daisy Standalone, the latest alpha, probably version .88. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, there was some some big uh, like video, uh, video essay thing someone posted today on on the Rust subreddit talking about like where we're at with Rust and here's what's going on with Rust. I was like, why are people still so invested in like the current state of development of Rust? It's been years. Like, why why are people still playing these games nonstop? Why are people still playing DayZ nonstop? There is like you've done everything. There's nothing more. <coughs> Well, I was telling Joel, I think it's, it's the same reason that people are still playing DayZ, referring to Rust, is that there's not really anything else out there yet. Like, there were a lot of attempts, and Rust and DayZ, and to a lesser extent, H1Z1 are the only ones still trying. Everything else has been abandoned already. You so, like, put if, that, and put that none of them have released. Uh, yeah, open play all world the really over. good games out there. And, and Ark, <laughs> Ark's pretty popular, but open world survival games are like, I think the one genre where the entire genre is going to come and go without a single game officially being released, <laughs> like a sim- single AAA release. They'll all have just been in development. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was mail time. You can write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com. This week, you should write in and let us know what games, what series, TV, 
movies, whatever, but primarily games have really resonated you with it in a way that made it hard to say goodbye to them. We want to hear about it. I'm still sad after mentioning Lost. Mm, sad for a lot of reasons <laughs> about Lost. I saw a magazine recently. It was kind of like, I think it was like five, fifth, five year anniversary since like the series ended or something like that. And I was like, five years since the show ended. <laughs> That's how uh, time works. I mean, even, even, okay, not to go back to the main topic, but even <laughs> saying goodbye to, like, to the Office cast. Oh, like, they, they, really, they really made I don't that want, last I don't want to think sad. about that. Season seven, seven, that ended it for me. Oh, man, seeing Michael Scott, <laughs> that was such a, I was crying. The, the was ending a, to Office, I, ending. well, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, I'm glad. I'm actually I'm glad you guys mentioned that because uh, Jess and I love that show. We watched it all through college together. Like that was like our show, high school and college. Um, we stopped watching it live for like the last couple of seasons, and the season before the last one, you know, wasn't amazing, but it was it was okay. Man, that last season, they did such a great job, kind of like bringing the show back together and closing it. Wow, <laughs> that was. Mm, feelings. Dude, that the when Michael Scott comes mm. back for that wedding, ah, uh, it was just surprise. to see him again for a little bit. I was like, oh, I miss you. <laughs> Be my boss in real life. <laughs> Damn it! What were we talking about again? <laughs> so uh, we were we were talking about how now it's time for ninety seconds with Joel, a part of the podcast where Joel eventually will be showing us more of his radio drama. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> but for now, Joel has some stories to tell us. What do you got for us this week, Joel? Uh, real quick, because Dave pretty much has this story, but uh, uh, I found out a really weird thing about my older brother, Jeremiah. Uh, he eats popcorn very, very weird. No, I don't. Not you, my brother. I was, I was going to see if we could get a thing going where it turns out I've been your older brother this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So I'm, I'm just your old We went out, old, we went out to dad. eat, and his wife says... Like she was like, yeah, we were making popcorn last night and I, I finally got my, I finally got Jeremiah some, some like tweezers or something, little tiny, like tongs, <laughs> metal tongs. I was like, I was kind of like, what tongs for, for what? She's like, oh, for eating popcorn. I'm like, oh, uh, what? <laughs> so my brother, he loves sloppy joes like messy burgers i mean it can get all over you and he's like i love it like the barbecue pit type you know just <laughs> real juicy barbecue food I, right i'm actually feeling like he, disgusted I know, I know. right now yeah, so he can <laughs> eat with his hands and everything right popcorn he cannot he hates however like any cheese on popcorn he can't handle on his fingers so he eats it with tongs and the reason why she bought him tongs was because he was Eating it with a spoon. He was popcorn. <laughs> and then I was like, so what? <laughs> I just thought, like, I, I don't like sloppy joes because I hate how messy they are, but I'm not going to eat it with a fork. I'll eat it. I just, I'll suffer through it. I just don't like it. But I was like, <laughs> he eats with a spoon. I was like, what? That's one at a time. <laughs> I just thought that was the weirdest thing. Back to you, Dave. <laughs> So I've actually got a good chunk of Joel's 90 seconds this week because, um, first of all, shout out to Ben, who is listening to this right now, because this story involves him, uh, <laughs> one of Joel's good friends. Uh, we, we, <laughs> I'm not going to shut up. I'm going to tell the whole story. We were all traveling with Joel a few weekends ago to help him film a short film. Um, I drove a couple hours on my own in my car, which was full of battery acid, so I'm like, losing brain cells as I drive because I, I battery spilled in the back. We all get up to this to this town in the mountains to help Joel film. We're getting set up and uh, Joel got in like a permit to film at this like rundown uh, old railroad depot. So we're just about to start filming. Um, I'm there again. Joel's Joel's our director and has the permit and everything. And Ben uh, is there as well. And uh, I used to work with Ben too. Uh, ben is Ben is awesome. And Joel's known Ben since they were kids. Like, if you think of like Calvin and Hobbes level like friendship, that's Ben and Joel. Like adventures in the forest, like classic <laughs> childhood friends. Like, I understand that. But here's what Joel did. We're all set up to film, and a couple of pe of the people from the town where we got the permit from show up to uh, just like check out what's like check out the filming to see what's going on. And Joel goes to do introductions, and he's got his mm. camera rig on his shoulder. And I'm standing there with like a clipboard. I still smell like battery acid from the drive up. 
I had got up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday, too. I just want to remind you, Joel. I don't do that. <laughs> and then I, I drove for two hours. I don't like driving either. You know you didn't do it fully for me, Dave. It was trains. Uh, yeah, it was okay, trains that rose you from the grave. <laughs> I wanted to explore the train yard, sure. So I, I'm standing there holding, like, the extra copy of the script and some pens and some, like, hand warmers because it was so cold out there. And Ben's got, like, another copy of the script, and he's got some of the audio equipment. And we're both just there to be production assistants, basically. And... I'm standing there with the clipboard. Joel is standing with the two people from the, the town who want to look at the filming. And Ben's kind of standing over next to our, our prop car. And Joel's saying, oh, this is my actor so-and-so. This is our other actor so-and-so. They're here for the film. And he goes, and this is my best friend. And he looks right at me. This is my best friend. And then he leans back around me and goes, Ben. <laughs> leads all the way back <laughs> I can see it on his face like he realized like oh crap I just like tried to like push Dave out of the way so they can see Ben my best friend so they don't see his eyes like oh oh and this is my awesome friend Dave <laughs> it's like something out of family guy <laughs> so I'm sitting I just couldn't resist. I just called him out on this one. I'm like, Joel, did you just lean around me to point at your best friend, Ben? And Joel's eyes get really big. I'm like, like no, no, sh- I did! <laughs> <laughs> As Joel does, I lost. Like, again, Ben and Joel, Calvin and Hobbs, our friendship. I can't compete with that, but that was hilarious. Like, I told Joel today, I was getting ready to tell the story. <laughs> I was like, Joel, if you had been closer, you would have actually, like, pushed me out of the way, like, oh, that's my best friend over there, Ben. Dave, get out of the way. Like, if you had been close enough to push me, you would have just... So... Oh, <laughs> embarrassing. And Let me it's... tell you about my best friend, Dave. Get out of the way. <laughs> Not him. And just the, just the icing on the brownie. Icing on the, and this is actually related to Joel. <clears throat> just a few days later... I just told John the story, and me and Joel and John worked together. <laughs> you know where this is going, Joel. I'm trying a few to remember days after he betrayed me with this best friend push out of the way, <laughs> we we went, got lunch down at the cafeteria. Oh, we, no! Don't tell <laughs> we, we played, <laughs> Shut up, Joel. I'm telling you. We played a game of way. I, I destroyed Joel as usual, so he's like a little bit bitter. And Joel's like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm feeling kind of crappy today. Let's go get some coffee. I'm gonna go get some coffee. You want you want to come just hang out? We'll get some coffee. I'm like, yeah, I still got some lunch time left. Let's just go get coffee. I, I don't want anything, but I'll I'll come hang out. So we're in line chatting, and Joel gets himself a, a little Starbucks coffee from the coffee shop. He's like, yeah, let me get a brownie too. So we're we're talking. We head back up to the office, walking together, talking about the Gwent game. I was like, I, yeah, I, I just I didn't play well today. Like I'm just I got this headache. Hopefully this coffee helps. He walks with me back into the office, turns left into the aisle where John works. <coughs> Walks up to John, says, hey, John, you know, I, I haven't seen much today. I bought you a brownie. Just want to let you know, you're a good friend. And he sits on the desk. I'm standing behind you. I'm like, you bastard. I was standing right behind you the whole time. Like, I just played Gwen with you and stood in line behind you while you bought John a friendship brownie. <laughs> it was a like free one. Like, and the great part was, Joel, you, like, forgot I was even walking with you. You just, like, turned off. I'm just sitting there at the end of the aisle. You're just like, hey, John, bought you a brownie. You just left me behind. There has to be a different level for, like, like you know, when you're, like, you like a girl and you get friend zoned. This has to be, like, a new level with, like, a friend zone of a friend zone or something. Oh, man. I'm it's, so it's, sorry. It's sorry. It's so sorry. Like, I don't care. But man, it makes a good story. I laughed so uh, hard. I called him out there too in front of John. And John's like, did you really just buy me a brownie like in front of Dave? <laughs> like, I did. I did. Uh, so that's my stories today of how Joel is not good at the social uh, interactions. Oh, man. <laughs> Day, next to him, Joel will be like, yeah, I was, I was going to go to this train museum, but I couldn't think of anybody to go with me, so I decided not to go. <laughs> Dave's like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> So at this point, it's become like a, a running gag where whenever Joel's like, oh, I can't do this or that. I'm like, oh, sorry. Is that activity for best friends only? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> Whatever bus will, I'll get to bring it up now. There are different levels of friends. Best friends, brownie friends. <laughs> I'm none of the above. <laughs> Jeremiah, you say that, Silent but now you want to know what level, level friends. friends we are. <laughs> You're like, Am I in the nothing, awesome friends I category? Haven't even been a, I haven't even been a part of the, these discussions, so... <laughs>
I guess that tells me a lot. I mean, maybe I'd I'd get brownies <laughs> if I'd occasionally let Joel win a game of Gwent. Maybe that's how that works. Yeah, Shane, I'm just Shane saying that said I you saw, were Joel zoned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, good. I'm glad we have a term for that now. We can oh, use nonstop. I, I was getting coffee and I saw I was like, oh, gluten free brown. I'm like, I bet John doesn't get brownies very often because gluten and all that crap. I was like, oh, I'll get this for John. And yeah, Dave said right behind. I didn't think for a second. I was like, oh yeah, because Dave was just talking about recently about like, hey, remember that time he called me an awesome friend. And see, Joel, I'm like, oh yeah, the, I remember that. Bye, Brownie. Joel, and that's the that's the best part though, is we know that you don't mean anything by it, but it happens yeah. so consistently. <laughs> it's Joel's so sweet nothings. They they stab you right in the heart. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That that sweet sweet betrayal was worth it for this fantastic story <laughs> that I will never let you live down. <laughs> oh, damn it! And with that, this has been Casual Shenanigans Gaming, a podcast all about the irreverent love of gaming. We will have some sort of show next week. Um, I don't think we're actually taking a Christmas break officially. But there will be some sort of show next week. Uh, it might go up a little bit late. We'll see. But thank you all for coming out. Thank you for being a part of the show. As always, you can write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com. You can tweet at casual shenanigan. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, etc., etc. iTunes podcasts are streamed live currently Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stand by. <laughs> that might be changing again. And uh, you can find them live for everybody else Monday mornings on iTunes SoundCloud Stitcher etc actually we're not on SoundCloud ignore that but thank you everyone for coming out thank you for being part of the show and until next time stay casual